Hey everyone, so we're gonna go over two key features of digital audio in this PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna narrate along here a little bit. Two key things, bit rate and sample rate. Both of them have to do with how your computer is recording the information. So let's just talk a little bit real quick about how computers deal with sound. So first thing that happens, of course, is air vibrates in some way. And then what happens is the microphone has a diaphragm on it. So some kind of surface that's going to wiggle a little bit in the air. And that will then turn that movement into electricity. And then our interface or our computer's built-in ADDA converter. So that's analog to digital and then back to digital to analog. So either forwards from analog to digital or backwards D to A, digital to analog converter basically takes tons and tons of measurements of that signal and turns it into stuff that computers can read, which is lots and lots of ones and zeros. So then your computer saves all those ones and zeros to the hard drive. And then to get it back out, so if you want to play back something you've recorded, your computer then uh, reads the hard drive and sends all those ones and zeros back to the converter. So either, the, again, the, your interface or whatever's built into the computer. And then those ones and zeros turn back into some sort of audio signal, which we call an analog signal, actual vibrations, right? And then the converter takes that analog signal and sends it back out to your speakers. So your speakers basically accept the electricity and turn that electricity into actual vibrations. Okay, so let's use some images to help talk about some of this process. So here is a wave. Now how tall these waves are is called the amplitude. That's really how loud the sound is gonna be. And then this is just a waveform image of a vibrating guitar string. So the string vibrates, and what happens is the string hits the air, and the air basically wiggles around, right? The wave goes, travels through the air, and all the molecules in the air bounce against each other. So sometimes they hit each other closely, and when they knock together, then they knock apart again. So sometimes the waves compress, and sometimes the waves uh, spread out a little bit extra, right? So that's called compression and rarefaction. And how strong those compressions and rarefactions are, how loud they are, is really how we see in the waveform how tall that is. And then from peak to peak is the wavelength. That is where we get pitch. It's how often these things happen. So if the waves are super close together, you get a very high pitch. And if the waves are really far apart, really long, wide wave, you get deeper sounds. So that's how the air uh, actually translates the sound uh, through the air. So uh, once the sound gets going from your guitar string or your voice or whatever it is, those sound waves hit a little surface inside a microphone that's attached to wires, right? So the sound waves hit this diaphragm that's inside your microphone and then shake it. And that shaking creates energy that's then translated into electricity and sent down uh, the cable. So diaphragm moves with the air, and then the microphone converts that movement into electricity. So that's pretty simple, except that all kinds of cool stuff happens in here to do all that translating, which is why there's so many different kinds of microphones and things, right? Because the way that it pulls the sound waves into the microphone uh, can really affect the sound, right? So better mics do a better job of representing the sound or uh, all kinds of cool things happen. So the ADDA, so analog to digital and then digital to analog converter takes measurements of the signal that are coming from the microphone and turn it into ones and zeros. So that's your interface or pretty much every computer, laptop, everything you have these days has something like that because anything with a built-in microphone has to have an A converter so analog to digital you speak into your phone and there's some kind of conversion that happens inside your phone that turns your voice into ones and zeros right so that's the analog to digital converter literally anything with a microphone on it has one of these built in and then if it has any kind of speaker it has to come back out that's the digital to analog side so often these are one in the same uh, kind of you know, feature the same box, but they're doing two different things. It's in 
to the computer and then back out again, right? So we hear it. So often on like a sound card or something, you're getting both of those together, right? So they're built into most sound cards and things. So again, uh, interfaces tend to have higher quality analog digital and digital to analog, so ADDA converters. And, uh, you know, computers getting pretty good at just having good built-in ones too. So if you don't have an interface, it's not the end of the world. So this guy then sends that information or wherever the ADDA converter lives, sends that information to the computer's processor and that saves it to a hard drive. So this is where the bit rate and the sample rate come in. So when the ADDA converter converts that audio information into ones and, ones and zeros, what information is it storing? Well, it, there's kind of two kinds of information that gets stored with each measurement. So as the sound is coming in, it is taking samples, which is basically little slices of moments in time. So as time goes by, the sound waves, and it's taking little samples of that sound, little bits of information of that sound, Basically, as the wave goes up and down, it's measuring how tall the waves are uh, and how, how small the waves are. So every moment of the wave is getting recorded. That's the sample rate. The sample rate is how many little slices of that wave are getting taken. And we'll see that in an image in a second too. And bit rate is how much information is, how many, how much information is basically in each, each measurement. So you can take a measurement but that measurement might have a little bit of data in it, or it might have lots of data in every measurement. And both of this, of course, affects how much hard drive space things take and sound quality. Okay, so a little bit about why, what sample rates we choose. So sample rate is based on uh, the Nyquist theorem. And basically, it's based on what we can hear. So humans can hear from about zero to 20,000 hertz. At zero to 20,000, often with uh, software and things, they use kilohertz, so that's every thousand hertz. So instead of 20,000, you'd see 20 kilohertz, KHZ, right? So zero to 20 or zero to 20,000, they're the same thing, right? Depends on whether you have hertz or kilohertz. Nyquist found that to get a really, a reasonably good digital representation of a sound, you have to be twice the sample rate. You have to, you need to sample twice as fast as the actual frequency is going. So that means if we go step back a little bit, how often we take a sample matters. So we have to take a sample at least twice as often as there is a wave. So the fastest waves that we can hear are 20,000, right? So what do we do if the wave is actually going 20,000 times? It's actually compressing and rarefacting 20,000 times a second. So in order to get an, an accurate representation of those 20,000, we have to take it at double. So what's that mean? Well, that means we have to measure at, at 40,000, right? And we don't know what range is going to actually come in. So we have to plan on the fastest stuff, right? So the maximum we can hear is 20,000. The minimum we can record is double that. A CD does a little bit better than that. You guys might remember CDs. <laughs> Maybe not. CD quality sound beats that by just a little bit. It's sample rate. So if you want to record at CD quality sound, you need at least 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz, 44.1 kilohertz uh, of samples, right? So you need to be a little bit past our range of hearing, or at least that's what they do to, to be safe, right? If you want to really accurately represent the sound that we can hear, you want to beat 40,000, right? At least two per the fastest wave. So I take at least two measurements of even the fastest waves. So this is kind of what happens if you don't have a good sample rate. So the same thing as you get when you get like a, a high resolution and low resolution uh, image like in a JPEG or something. Uh, high resolution will give you a good representation. If it's too low, so if we had less than two measurements per wave, right? So we need, again, twice as fast as any wave goes, right? We, we'd get something like this in the sound. So you start having issues with the sound quality. So here's our waveform. And here is our sample rate, 
right? So in this case, how many samples are we taking per wave? Lots. And in a higher sample rate, you're taking even more measurements. So tons and tons of measurements as the sound wave goes by. So over time, you're either going to take a minimum of two, but hopefully better than that, right? A minimum of two measurements per wave. And so a high sample rate is going to take lots of measurements per wave. So uh, again, this is dependent on the quality of your analog to digital converter the sample rate is. And Pro Tools software will allow up to 192 kilohertz. So way, way past that minimum, right? So you can get an unbelievable number of samples per wave. Uh, with the software as long as you have a converter that can do it. Uh, film tends to be a sample rate of 48 and audio tends to be 44.1. Those are the two minimums. Why they chose those two numbers, we don't know. Uh, as long as we're order over 40,000 on our sample rate, we're going to get a pretty good represent representation. Uh, so film is at 48. So typically you have a choice when you set up a new audio session, whether you want 44.1 or 48 or some multiple of one of those two. So if you're planning on music only, you usually take 44.1 or double that, which is 88.2. And if you're getting really crazy, you can double that again. And then for film, it's 48,000. And then you double that and you get 96. So when you see an interface that's advertised as 96K, basically it's saying it can do a sample rate that is double the standard for film, right? So film is 48,000 and double that is 96. So here is sample rate, right? Sample rate is how many measurements do I take of each little wave, every piece of that waveform, right? And then the bit depth is how accurate each of those measurements is. So, and that always has to do with the volume, right? The volume of the sound. So bit depth really affects the amplitude. So how subtle each measurement is. So you get lots of gradations of volume here, Whereas here you get almost no gradation of volume with one bit, right? You actually get almost none. So this is how, how subtle your volume can be. So if you're taking something in at 16 bit, you have 65,000 gradations of volume. So that means if somebody adjusts their volume just a little bit, uh, you're going to be able to record it. But if it's really low, like 4 bit, you're not going to be able to record it. Now to get the actual dynamic range in decibels uh, of the bit rate, you just multiply by six. So 16 bit times six. And you're gonna probably get tested on that at some point. So make sure you remember that. Take your bit rate and multiply it by six. Usually the bit rate is eight, 16, 24, 32 is the max. So there's only three or four. And how do you get it? You can get the dynamic range of the actual recording by multiplying the bit rate times six. Why it's times six, I have no idea. So dynamic range 16 bits is a dynamic range of 96 decibels. And that's uh, plenty. 20 is not uh, actually an option in Pro Tools. The next one up, Pro Tools starts you at 16 bit, and the next one is 24. And look at the difference in the dynamic range between 16 and 24. 65,000 gradations of volume in 16 bit, 16 million in 24 bit. So when do we need this? We need this for classical music and things that are very, that need very subtle changes in dynamic. So if you have a string quartet or something, you probably want to go with 24 bit, but if you're doing rock and stuff, you don't need as much dynamic range, right? It's subtlety of dynamics that it's measuring, right? So you don't have lots of soft, uh, very soft changes or very subtle changes between volume in rock and roll and, and hip hop and things like this. So you don't need it as much. Uh, and it takes a much more hard drive space if you're concerned about that. So 16 is fine as long as you're not doing something like classical music, in which case you probably go with 24 for classical music. Uh, any kind of like very subtle dynamic differences are when you want that higher bit rate. And what is the dynamic range of 24 bit? It is 24 times six, 144 decibels, right? So uh, remember that, that guy, that multiply by six. That's really, really helpful. And is that it? I think that's all we've got. So when you're choosing your bit rate and your sample rate in a session, and here, let me just show you what that looks like. You're often gonna do this and you're gonna see it all the time. 
create when you create a new session Pro Tools is always going to give you a choice that looks kind of confusing at first. You're going to see a file type, which we'll deal with, but typically you just choose Wave uh, because it works everywhere. Then it's going to give you a, a question about sample rate. What sample rate do you want? And what are the choices? Well, 44.1 CD quality, 48 regular film quality, right? And then do you want double that sample rate, right? Do we want to take double the number of measurements in the waveform? Well, that's 88.2. And if we want double film, double of what film typically does, you do 96. And you can see my interface will even survive 190, 176 and 192. So you can get up to 192 with this software. And I'm sure that the newer versions will keep going higher and higher. I never use more than like 88.2 or 96. So that number of samples will greatly increase your file size. Uh, so I tend to just stick around uh, 88 to 96 or 44 and 48. Those are all totally fine. I very rarely use any of that, those higher sample rates. So uh, the sample rate, again, affects how many samples you're taking, right? So it lets you be very accurate. It also lets your edits be extra accurate. So, uh, but 44.1 is perfectly fine. Works great. It's CD quality. A lot of people, what they'll do is go in at double CD quality, and then when you do your final mix down and mastering and all that stuff, then you end up having to downsample it to 44.1 so that it works on things like CDs and MP3s and stuff. MP3s also tend to use 44.1. And then the bit depth, there's only three choices, 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit float. So 16-bit is fine for most rock and roll and stuff. Uh, anything with incredibly subtle dynamic changes, you probably use 24-bit. And then 32, again, I almost never use it. Never use it. But you can if you want to. So you're always going to get those choices. And just be aware your bit depth is affecting dynamics, right? How loud and soft, how subtle the loud and soft moments can be. And then sample rate is how many samples I'm taking, which can affect a little bit how you edit. Right? It's going to be, give you much more, uh, you're going to be able to zoom farther in on each wave and cut more accurately if you need to. So it's nice to do double like 88.2 or 96 uh, because it's taking, so, it's taking twice as many samples per second. So how many measurements is the little man in my interface taking? 44,100 per second. Right, And if I put it at 88.2, that little thing has to write down 88,200 little samples, right? Little uh, uh, measurements of the audio per second. And then how complicated are those measurements? That's our bit depth. And that's what affects our volume gradation, right? So do I want it to be super, 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 super fine gradations of volume? Or am I fine with just 16 bit or so? Okay, I hope that helps. Have fun. See you in the next one.